Boop. Happy Friday. It is Friday, April 24th, and I excuse you for this table, and I've, I have had it pointed out to me by the guys that are working on getting a podcast. Uh, do this, and it shakes the camera, too. Gave everybody, like, dizziness. Um, this table squeaks a lot, and I apologize for that. And so, um, whenever the podcast is up, you're going to hear a lot of squeaking. But then you know it's real, right? I mean, it's like seeing, you know, tool marks on a piece of fine woodworking. You know, it's actually real. It wasn't just... Anyway, I'm just trying to justify a squeaky table. But uh, today is April 24th, 2020, and this is the Daily Bible Reading, and we're going to talk about holiness today. Now, our texts for today, the complete list of texts, were Psalm 116, 1 through 4, and 12 through 19. Just read the whole psalm. I don't know why they cut it like that. Anyway, and then Isaiah 26, 1 through 4, and then 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. And that's why I titled this one Holiness today, because I thought um, we read this, and this is a text for the church, and it gets read on a Sunday morning um, if it gets dealt with. And then I'm not sh sure sometimes that people leave or leave the text really understanding what Peter's talking about with holiness. Um, so you can read the entire section there, uh, 13 through 16, but I'm going to just focus on uh, 14 on and part of 14 on. Specifically the part where Peter is saying, Do not be conformed by the de to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance... Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all of your conduct, for it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And that's uh, verses 14 through 16 here in the first chapter of 1 Peter. Um, so, okay, what is holiness? That leads us to the question, what is holiness? It's, uh, you know, maybe you've heard it the word used before uh maybe you have fortunate and your pastor you know she's really on the ball and you know if you go to church and she has talked about this what it is uh well i'm going to talk about it of course from a wesleyan perspective because this is the wesley center online after all um so i'm going to start by talking about first i guess what it isn't so what is holiness well what it isn't is just a bunch of do's and don'ts right it's not just um a matter of doing certain things and not doing other things. Uh, John Wesley talks about this, uh, especially in a uh, sermon called uh, True Christianity Defended. It's sermon number 134. Um, and it, he talks about a really interesting section in it where he talks about it's not just, he uses the term negative things. In other words, it's not a list of don't do's, like I said. So, um, you know, he lists all the, the bad things. So you may have heard holiness spoken of this way or people justifying themselves as holy because the, and then they tend to list all the things that they don't do, right? Um, well, that's, mm, that's not even really what holiness is. I mean, it's, is it conceivable to you? Inconceivable or conceivable to you that um, somebody could be really good at not doing generally bad things, but at the, you're not really sure that they're they're holy. And it might be because, yeah, it's possible that you could not be doing bad things, but be doing that for all the wrong reasons, which we'll get into later. Um, and then it's also not just about the outward things, as he says it, or in other words, doing good things. It, you know, Wesley's point of view on this is that you can do all kinds of good works and still not be holy. Uh, even, he says, the golden rule. I mean, you can live out the gold, what we call the golden rule, uh, you know, do unto others as you would have done unto you, um, but still not be holy. He points out, as a matter of fact, that, you know, those very words, a version of that, were written over the tomb of a Roman emperor. Um, and we're pretty sure they were not holy. Uh, go read your history books. Anyway, so it's not it's not just about, you know, the do's and the don'ts. Just because you don't do a bunch of things doesn't make you holy. And just because you do a bunch of things that even though they might be very good things, that doesn't make you holy either. Um, and then he even talks about in a letter to a guy named Mr. Lawrence, um, he talks about, 
he's trying to correct this guy's error in thinking that just because the guy has joy in his life, that that means he is holy, that, that joy is equated to holiness. And it's, it's kind of, it's, gets, it's a little complicated. I'm not sure how the guy got to that part, but apparently he has come to the decision that, well, I am holy because I am joyful. I'm happy all the time. Right. And so it's like, you know, all about his happiness. Well, um, this is what Wesley says to him in this letter. He says, You never learned either from my conversation or preaching or writings that holiness consisted in a flow of joy. If Mr. Maxfield, and I'm dropping some stuff out just for the sake of this flow. He says, If Mr. Maxfield or you took, and he's, that's another person who believes this apparently, if either you or Mr. Maxfield took it to be anything else, it was your own fault, not mine, and whenever you walked out of that dream, you ought not to have laid the blame of it upon me. And so he's he's saying, you know, you're you're dreaming this this dream that just because you're happy all the time means that you're holy. Uh, that's not the way it works. Um, now he also goes to great lengths in this letter to explain that joy, true joy, is an outcome of holiness. That that you can ex you know that having the holiness that he's talking about in your life will lead to, you know, you feeling joy, but the joy itself, just because you feel joy, isn't holiness. And that makes sense because, you know, you can do a lot of things that make you feel joyful, but they're not necessarily the holiest things in the world. So yeah, let's disabuse ourselves of that error. So, okay, what is holiness? If it's not, if it's not not doing things and if it's not doing certain things and if it's not even just the feeling of joy that we get from doing those things um what is holiness well let's talk about scriptural holiness this is this is the term that wesley likes to use so um we've got another reference here uh, going back to that letter this is the part that i cut out of his his letter here to um mr lawrence he says i told you it was love this is what he says he told him holiness was. Holiness, I told you, it was love. The love of God and our neighbor. The image of God stamped on the heart. The life of God in the soul of man. The mind that was in Christ. Enabling us to walk as Christ walked. So that's what he says holiness is. It's, that it's, it's love. Specifically the love of God stamped on the believer. Stamped on their heart. Um, that gives them the the heart of God, the love of God in them, and the mind of Christ in them so that they can walk, enabling them to walk as Christ walked. And that's an important distinction, uh, especially at times you know, going back, you know, in the spirit of this letter that he's writing to Mr. Lawrence, you know, it's an important thing to understand because at t especially at times and in places when mere joy just merely being joyous or having things to be joyous over when those those are hard to come by because of either the time or the place or the conjunction of the two um you know that's important to know because otherwise holiness just depends on your emotional state and how you feel and i'll be real honest there have been times over these past couple of months where if it was just about whether i was joyful or not um my holiness uh, well, not that I'm claiming great holiness, but uh, if my if holiness is just dependent upon how I feel in any given day and whether or not I feel joy, that's a problem. Um, so anyway, what is holiness? Holiness is about love, and this uh, you you probably you may have heard a quote thrown around, probably heard it misused. Um, have love and do what you will. So this is this is what holiness is about. It's about the love of God. Uh, as Wesley says here in this letter, stamped on us. Um, or elsewhere you hear him say, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. It's, uh, you know, love and sanctification is another fancy word we use for this. So what is important about this? Well, like he is saying here in, in this letter to Mr. Lawrence, is having that love stamped on us, changes us and and changes us to be more like god in other words like he says we have um the image of god stamped on our heart the life of god and becomes a part of our soul it's in the soul in our souls and the mind of christ is in our minds 
Um, it changes, because of that, it changes our perspectives on things. And through the life of God in the soul and through the mind of Christ being within us, um, and, it, and that enables us to walk also as Christ walked. So holiness is not so much an act that we put on, right? That goes back to the doing things or not doing things. Holiness isn't just an act we put on. Um, it's not that as much as it's uh, the Holy Spirit acting upon us to move us and guide us and direct us in the paths that we should go. Um, to place where going back to the idea of joy that we really do end up and find true joy. So holiness isn't so much an act that we put on as it's the Holy Spirit acting upon us. Uh, so there's this guy, Joseph Pieper, that I really like to read. And he he's writing on this thing called love, right? And that's another thing you got to remember. When I say have love and do what you will, it's a very specific kind of love, right? It's not just the warm fuzzies. It's a very dynamic, very aggressive kind of love that comes from outside us. It's a gift, right? So he says, Joseph Pieper, quoting Aquinas, says here, the human mind, from the very fact that it is directed by the Holy Spirit, is enabled to direct itself and others. But, he says, continuing to quote Aquinas, in the gift of the Holy Spirit, the position of the human mind is of one moved rather than of a mover. Right? So, he, and then he goes on to say, here then is the truest applicability of the dictum of Augustine, have love and do what you will. So have love and do what you will. This is exactly what Wesley's saying is if the love of God is stamped on your soul, if the love of God is shed abroad in your heart, that means the love of God, the God's gift in you, his presence that he's poured into you is what now directs your thoughts and your actions. And so then everything else comes into play. We Now we can go back to the don't do this, do this, because then... We don't do things because they're not in keeping with the will of God. We do things because they are in keeping with the will of God, because they harmonize with the mind of Christ, with the love of God stamped on our hearts. So holiness is about God being present in you, and you being present in God, and God acting upon you and through you, and God becoming the mover, and you becoming the one that's moved. Uh, because... To paraphrase what Peter says here, as he is holy, so is the place in which he dwells. So, go out and may the love of God be shed abroad in your hearts. May it be stamped upon your soul. Have a good day, and we'll see you Monday. Boop.